My name is Guy Kesterman and I've been a professional mountain bike tester for nearly 25 years. But the bike in this box is the most expensive bike I've ever tested for my Guy Kes TV channel. Because in here is the brand new Pivot Switchblade in Team XDR spec. Which means, first thing out of the box are the Reynolds Black Label Enduro rims. So it's a carbon rim, 28mm internal and with the super fast engaging Industry 9 Hydro hubs on it. 3C Max Terra Mini DHF 2.5 front and it's a 29er rim. So big wheels and then out the back in true pivot switchblade style we have a super boost rear wheel. So that's larger, that's a wider axle and hub, di hub spacing than the uh, typical 148 boost, uh, just to give more clearance and more stiffness. Uh, Pivot are a big fan of it. They introduced it on their first switchblade. And to be honest, it hasn't been uh, taken up massively by other people, uh, this 157 mil width. So, uh, but they're still pushing on with it and other people are jumping on the bandwagon now. It's, although it's a relatively small bandwagon, uh, Evil has gone super boost on their new following. And it's rolling on these uh, super top end uh, Industry 9 hubs. And as you can see, XTR brakes, because this whole team build, as you'd expect from an XTR, by uh, XTR label build comes with uh, XTR brakes and XTR gears. So, as you'd expect for a £9,000 bike, this is a uh, full carbon build. Pivot use their own proper high-end composite carbon materials to so their own spec and they use their own hollow core construction so to maximise the uh, compression of the carbon and minimise the kind of amount of heavy resin and the chance of them getting any air bubbles in there. Uh, pivot quote frame weight as 2.6 kilos for a small without a shock which would equate to a 3 kilo frame in medium but actually kind of complete bike weight and more comparable with 3.5 kilo frame weight bikes that I've tested. But, you know, it's certainly ballpark. It's not crazy light, but it's certainly a good ballpark weight. Nice to see a proper sized uh, replaceable derailleur hanger bolt because all too often they're absolutely tiny and the hangers start to work loose really, really quickly. So just snug that in there. I mean, as you can see, it does have some small bolts on it uh, because it comes with these uh, really neat little uh, cable port uh, little covers on here. So it'll set up for wireless or it'll set up for single ring. But interestingly, despite the fact that Pivot always worked really closely with Shimano, there's no provision for DI2, which suggests that the next Shimano electric uh, setup coming along is wireless as well. Just free the chain from the bubble wrap. You see... The clutch on the XDR mech is off at the moment, just makes it a bit easier to get the wheel in. And then, oh, let's slide that rear wheel into place here. There's no cage lock on the Shimano mech, so there it goes. But just, I mean, just sorry, just before we put uh, things in there, I mean, obviously, you can see on this side that's pretty obvious. You've got this really kind of intricate, uh, rubberized, flexible chain quietening plate there but even on the inside you've got these little plastic scuff panels there so when you're sliding the rear wheel in it's uh, not going to cause any damage on the carbon and as you can see it's a uh, DW link system I'll talk about the uh, suspension in a second but it's a Dave Weagle uh, designed uh, suspension system as to be honest pivots have been for a very long time uh, one of my first live ride reviews was on the uh, pivot Mac 5.5 and, uh, but they've been using, whoop, it would be a lot easier. Just pop the spacer out the uh, four pot Shimano XDR brakes there. So yeah, four pot Shimano on the back there. We'll probably flip it around and have a good detailed look in a minute. But really neat insert there on the bolt through rear end. So I snug that up and nice big chunky gear hanger, like I say, which also works as the uh, bolt receiver for the bolt through axle. Now, this is the team, so you get this super light uh, race face next R crank. Uh, that's the rally version of the uh, next SL crank, so it actually comes with reinforced uh, pedal inserts and it comes with a heavier duty crank axle on there as well. 
And just, you know, while you're down here, there's just really neat detailing. Again, you've got a super short pivot there. But on top of that pivot, you can see there's just like a rubber kind of gusset that just keeps dr muck from dropping down into that gap between the uh, seat, between the swing arm and the mainframe. Uh, just behind there, you've got uh, ISCG mounts for a chain guide, although it's been a while since I've seen anyone use them. And then up here, really neatly machined uh, rocker link for this uh, factory uh, DPX2 shock. Uh, and as you'll notice, it's actually a vertically mounted shock. Uh, first time Pivot have gone with a vertically mounted shock. Uh, just makes enables them to sort of drop the top tube lower, make the whole frame compact and lighter. And as you can see, they've handily marked its 142 mil travel at the back. And then when I get to this fork unleashed, it's a 160 mil travel fork there. Right, I figured I'd save you a, a bit of unwrapping and me fighting with cardboard and tape. Uh, so, I'm just going to have to watch me fight with a uh, stem bolt instead because somebody's decided to tighten these up far tighter than necessary. I mean, I have to say that's a real pet peeve. You don't need to tighten if you've if you've taken the bar out, the stem clamp doesn't need to be tight anymore. You know, you wasted me seconds here. There's people sat at home going, "Oh my God, I do not need to see that old bold fool faff around with a stem." And if you just left the bolts, you know, pretty much snug like that, we could have all saved ourselves some time. But anyway, uh, just going back to details, it's Pivot's own stem. Uh, that's really nice looking uh, uh, cold forge unit there. It's 45 mil length on every size except extra small, which gets a 35 mil length. Uh, Pivot's own headset, but you can run uh, external or internal uh, head lower headset bearing, depending on how you want the geometry to sit. And then you've got Pivot's own carbon bar here as well. Uh, nice flat, low rise, looks to be a good shape. And again, that varies depending what size of bike you are getting. So I think it starts at 760, uh, runs through 780 width uh, for most sizes, including this large, and then tops out at an 800 on the extra large. So, and final point of order, obviously you've got XTR brakes there. Interestingly, it's a race face lever for this uh, Fox Transfire dropper on the back there. And then uh, obviously down here, uh, we've got these Fox 36 uh, factory forks and good to see a grip two damper on there. Uh, so it's the high and low speed compression adjustable fork, uh, not the kind of click, click, click multi-position uh, fit fork. So, happy days in terms of control. So let's get this front wheel in there. QR15 axle, as you'd expect. I mean, standard boost on the front. There's nothing like a super boost standard for the front yet. Nice big front brake rotor. And as you can see, it's uh, the four pot XTR trail brakes. So uh, decent stopping power there as well. Uh, again, coming up the leg. Obviously, Kashima, as you'd hope, factory uh, top, you know, on a nine gram bike, you are going to want a top of the range uh, factory fork. So that's obviously what you're getting with this Kashima leg. Uh, 160 mil travel, short offset. So again, light bar feel, but super stable in terms of the wheel, in terms of the front end feel. It's not super radical in terms of angles. It's a uh, 66 degree head angle with a 75.5 degree uh, seat angle in uh, the lower setting. And then it's actually got a uh, flip chip here up in this upper link on the shock that you can change it to uh, basically half a degree. So uh, that makes it 76 at the seat and 66.5 at the front end. One thing that is pretty radical, back end's pretty short, uh, just over 430 mil. Uh, so that keeps that rear wheel tucked in really, really tight. And then you've got this sort of discrepancy between front and rear travel, 142 mil at the rear, 160 at the front. So uh, again, it's it's what, they started doing that with the 5.5, uh, like I say, I'll put a link up to the video I did on that. Uh, very early video, very ropey, very rainy in the Forest of Dean. Uh, so hopefully we'll have better weather and better quality for this one. And then uh, you've got the, uh, like I say, it's changed to a vertical shock mount there and it's a trunnion shock as well. So keeps uh, the shock super smooth and they've just you know, fitted the uh, little sag adjuster on there for easy setup and although I mean it's not just these uh, stickers that are custom for the uh, shock on this bike the base plate and the uh, all the adjuster kind of internals inside it are fully custom to pivot uh, designed because it's a more progressive setup naturally pivot always go massively into detail on uh, 
how they build their bikes and how they kind of connect all the ancillary components. It really is a package deal. I mean, that's I guess that's why you know they spend a ton of time developing stuff, and I guess that's how they justify the cost of the bike because they are spendy even by boutique bike standards. But you have got a full custom shock package there, and because it's gone to this vertical setup now, it's easier to integrate with the uh, Fox Live valve. And you can see there, they've actually got the mounting for a uh, Fox Live valve battery. Uh, that's the fully automated Fox shock system. Or you can, uh, there's a lot of people coming out now with storage systems that fit on there. Uh, because the frame layout now, you can get a bottle cage in on all frame sizes. Even the extra small will take a full large size bottle. And then look, I mean, again, just like loads of detail around here. Like every little corner has got a recess cut out of it. You know, it's not just stuck on the outside. That little bumper's recessed in there. And then you've got... Really nice sort of belly armour there and another bottle cage mount there. Not not the most uh, hygienic for the UK uh, trail scene, but, uh, you know, useful if you want to put some bit of storage in there. And then coming up the top here, again, like I say, uh, seat tubes are relatively short uh, for the length, so you could size up uh, if you want to put more reach in there. Reach on this is for 70 in the low position on this large or 475 in the higher position just because the way the bike kind of tilts as you angle it up but definitely you know definitely a move to a more progressive bike from pivot uh, than we used to see a few years back and pretty balanced all-round geometry frame weight they're claiming 2.6 kilos for a small without the shock in so i guess you're creep with that dpx2 in you're creeping towards a uh, sort of three kilo frame weight for a medium which is what most people quote so kind of around most people's short travel bikes to be honest but you know not crazy light not certainly not xc light and there are you know you could get relatively close with an alloy bike or, and pivot might indeed be bringing out an alloy version of this switchblade eventually they do tend to do that on some of their models uh but they certainly haven't yet so i'm just going to fire up the scales here and we'll get a complete bike weight off it as well i mean like you say with the uh, reynolds wheels do you want to come up nice and close with when reynolds wheels cabin wheels i mean the tires are relatively large it's got a 2.4 rear and a 2.5 front but as you can see oh hang on got a touch down on the front wheel come on I could have planned this better, couldn't I? And it's a steel saddle. There's nothing fancy on the saddle there. It's Pivot branded uh, WTB saddle. Again, they put a different saddle on uh, different models. Smaller bikes get a different saddle to the larger bikes. But there we go. Scales of truth say 13.62 for this large uh, without pedals. And, you know, that's that's a pretty respectable uh, frame weight for a uh, bike with a 160mm fork. But, you know, it's nothing incredible. Uh, but then... You know, this is a bike designed, obviously, to be stiff, capable, uh, strong. Uh, all the usual attributes you'd want from a uh, sort of fast, hard-hitting agro trail bike. So, just flipped it around to show you some details on this side. Uh, as you can see, uh, back end, post mount, as you'd expect. Uh, XTR 180mm direct mount brake there. It's the big trail brake, as I said before, with the little cooling fins on it. So, uh, hopefully that will behave itself. And... Really big chunky uh, swing arm here. It's a single piece swing arm with this big kind of Y brace at the front for stiffness there. Super short. I mean, that's really a sort of pivot signature move. These super short linkages here with these oversized bearings on there. Uh, talking about bearings, just one thing that not everyone will be happy about. It's a press fit bottom bracket in there. But I've been riding a Norco with a press fit for being absolutely hammering that in all kinds of weather all winter. And it's been totally fine so far. So maybe the evil press fit days are behind us. Uh, other things to talk about. It's a 346mm bottom bracket height or 352 in high, so relatively lofty ride height, but this whole frame is designed to use either double 29er or 27.5 plus tyres. It's one of the few frames that's still compatible with those, and or you can run it as a mullet with a smaller back wheel. So if you did want to slacken it out and drop the rear end, then obviously mullet is an option. But obviously we'll just have to... Uh, get this bike, get some pedals on it, get the shock set up and get out on the trail in a kind of solitary but uh, socially responsible and uh, not too reckless manner and uh, see how it rides. Because uh, obviously, you know, I can talk all day about hollow core carbon and beautiful little rubber grommets and the way Pivot always go into super detail with their shock tunes and stuff like that and how the grips are really nice. Now, I particularly like this green colour. But what really matters is how does this bike ride 
Is it worth £9,000? And uh, how does it compare to sort of other top-end bikes in this in this kind of mid-travel category? Uh, like the Pace RC295, like Santa Cruz Hightower, you know, you know, there's a whole load of bikes in this category now. And like I said already, the geometry on this bike is quite conservative compared to things like the RC295, Yeti SB150, uh, the Santa Cruz High Tower. So it'll be interesting to see how this package uh, holds together on the trail. So anyway, I've been waffling on now. Uh, thanks very much for your time. Uh, don't forget to click to notifications, subscribe if you already haven't. If you really like what I'm doing, uh, join my Patreon channel as a sponsor. That's where any first ride impressions on this Pivot Switchblade will be going first. So they get the early edits, they get the extended edits, they get the behind the scenes stuff. So thank you very much for your time. I've been Guy Kestevan, this has been Guy Kez TV, and I've been rattling on about, probably for too long, on the Pivot's brand new Switchblade Agro 29er Trail Enduro Bike.